Okay. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> that sounded like the, on the end of one of the, one of the fox hunts then. Um, right. Um, so it's now not three. It's now three twenty five. Um, my apologies for late starting, but we had a bit of technical difficulties, which hopefully touch wood we are over. Um, so I'd like to welcome you all to this virtual meeting of Hounslow's licensing panel. I would like to welcome the members of the panel who are sitting here today, as well as council officers who will be assisting the members throughout the meeting. In addition, I would like to welcome members of the public who are watching this meeting at home. <coughs> as you all may know, until recently, virtual meetings for council business was not legal, but as a result of the coronavirus pandemic, and the quarantine arrangements required by government, the law has been changed to let local authorities meet in a virtual way to make decisions. Therefore, this meeting is taking place using the introduced government regulations. The way this meeting will work is that as chair, I will be running the meeting and inviting people to speak. As it is very easy for people to speak over each other in a meeting like this, I will ask each member or officer to speak in turn at the appropriate stage. This will mean that there should normally be no need for people to interrupt or to ask questions. However, I will make sure that members have ample opportunity to ask questions and make comments on the reports and applications before them. The exception to this will be the legal committee or licensing officers who may turn on their microphone to alert me to any legal governance or planning issues that needs addressing. Although I would expect this to be rare. In addition, we have a producer of the meeting from our ICT department who also may contact me if necessary, but it's unlikely if all goes well. The etiquette for members of the panel and for officers who are expecting to speak will be to mute your microphones until you are asked to speak. This means that only one person will be speaking at a time. There will be no background noise, making it easier for us all to allow to follow the meeting and also for those watching at home. I.e. we won't be getting the hounds interrupting us. So. Um, <laughs> I will also ask members always to say who they are and when they can and when they make a contribution and to speak slowly and clearly for the same reason. We have three members of the licensing committee with us today to form this panel and it is we who will be making the decisions. Officers of the Council will provide assistance and advice as required, but the final decisions will be made by members. I would now like to introduce each of the members here tonight one by one. Um, and I will start. Right, I'm Councillor Richard Foote. I'm Chair of the Licensing Committee uh, and I represent Hamworth Ward. So now, Councillor Adrian, Adriana Gilg. Thank you very much and thank you to all being present today. I'm Adriana George. I'm a councillor for uh, Bedford Ward in Hounslow and I'm also a member of the licensing team. Thank you. Councillor Giles. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Councillor Gabriella Giles. I'm a councillor for Chiswick Riverside Ward and a member of the licensing committee. So I'm now going to invite the officers who will be speaking and we, we're dealing with the street market first. So I'm going to ask Nicola Harbour to speak. Hi Not there, to my name. introduce herself anyway, sorry. <laughs> That's OK. My name's Nicola Harbour and I'm the Licensing Authority Officer. And do we have Nishi Patel with us? No, Nishi's not in for this one. She's for the oh, next. Is it? No, not Ian. OK, so can I eat straight to yourself? <laughs> Hello, um, I'm Kenny Zali. I'm a lawyer advising the panel this afternoon. Thank you. Uh, we also have officers acting in a producing role for the technical side of the meeting, but as they're not expected to be involved in the discussions meeting, I will thank them for their help and not ask them to introduce themselves. Right, can I just check that everybody's muted their phone again? Right. 
Members of the public are reminded that the agenda and all reports being considered by the panel today can be found on the Council website under the licensing panel meetings page. So if you want to see them, that's where to look. I also want to make sure that all members have seen the agenda and reports. And as we've spoken earlier, I know you have. <laughs> I'd like to remind members of the need to hear all of the evidence in each report we're considering tonight. This means that you should listen to the whole debate. This is a legal requirement. If you should find you are having technical problems and need to log out of the meeting and come back in again, please let me know immediately, ideally beforehand, but if not afterwards, by turning on your microphone. This would, would be a permitted interruption. We can then decide how far we need to recap if that's necessary or if the member needs to not to vote on that item. Finally, I would say to any member of the public listening or watching, thank you for your joining us this evening. We hope this meeting will go well, but with any virtual meeting, may suffer from unexpected technical hitches, so please bear with us. I would also clarify that this meeting is being recorded and will be made available on the Council's YouTube channel in the next few days. Contributors to the meeting are asked to remember that they will therefore be included in the recording of this public meeting. Thank you. Uh, we now move to the first item on the agenda. Right, we now move on to the licensing application for decision at this meeting. The first application is for the High Street trading license for Antiques Market in Chiswick High Road. Where we need time contributions, I will ask the legal officer to alert me when allocated timings, timings have been reached. I will also ask her to alert me to the guillotine being reached if we have not concluded the meeting by that time. May I remind all of members, officers and public speakers, speakers at this meeting to introduce themselves each time they speak and also to turn off their microphones when they finished it speaking. It's also important to speak slowly and clearly so that everyone can understand what you're saying. Finally, if you're making reference to any agenda documentation, please give the page and paragraph details. Right, we're now going to hear the um, agenda item for the uh, Chiswick Antiques Vintage Market. Um, I'm going to get uh, Nicola uh, to introduce the, the uh, item, please. Okay. Members are requested uh, to determine this application for the grant of a temporary street trading license in respect of Chiswick Antiques and Vintage Market, stalls to run from outside Chiswick Police Station, uh, 211 Chiswick High Road to South Beach Shop, 223 Chiswick High Road. The application uh, uh, was received from the applicant, um, Jennifer Titmus, um, trading as Corky Events. The purpose of the application is to authorise the, sorry, let me start again. The purpose of the application is to authorise the applicant to run a market of up to 80 stores on the public highway in the area has, as highlighted in paragraph 3.0 of this report. The market would be held every Sunday, sorry, every second Sunday for a six month period. The plan photos of the proposed area have been attached as Appendix A, along with a revised COVID-19 risk assessment. Of those consortees identified in 4.1, there has been one representation from a councillor concerned with the granting of the application in the current COVID situation in relation to social distancing. Also, it could exacerbate existing criminal behaviour in the area. We have also received two representations from other persons, both concerned that the application would be granted in the current situation with the COVID night with COVID-19. Also that the market would be would reduce would be reducing pavement space for the public to pass safely. The full representation has been attached, sorry, the full representations have been attached as Appendix B. Copies of both report and representations have been sent to the applicant. 
Thank you, Chair. Right. Thank you, Nicola. Um, right. Can I ask, is it Jennifer? Jennifer Titmus from the applicant? Yes. Hello, sorry, I had to just come off mute. Hi, yes, Jennifer Jenny Titmer. OK, yes, so um, you, you've had the, um, heard the officer make her, uh, uh, have you, are you OK with that? And you agree with the circumstances? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to verify, she put, she said every second Sunday, so that means every, the second Sunday of every month, oh, not every so other Sunday. If you OK, second, su second Sunday of every month, right. Every month. OK. Right, uh, so we move on to... Um, I've written out a four minutes, just a little... Yeah, no, I will come to you later. That's just really... The, uh, you, you will be coming in uh, and make your case okay. um, un under stage four of the applicant's case. Um, so I'm going to move now. There's no nothing from police licensing authority or any other body cases. Um, but I've got... Councillor Bidoff is there. Uh, Councillor Bidoff, I'm, I'm allocating five minutes for you. Um, but I would be, uh, under the circumstances, I'd be very happy if you, if you would uh, be as precise as possible. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Um, just to clarify, I'm not against this because of COVID. I'm, I'm not against it at all. Um, I raised the COVID point simply to set the scene that if other events can't go ahead, then obviously this can't go ahead. It must be given the same level of treatment as anything else. And I understand that Jenny under, understands that anyway, just a slight interpretation of what um, was said at the beginning. And I'm not, I am concerned about the two main aspects, which is about having more people milling around in front of bank ATMs, and there are two banks that will be affected by that. Neither of them is in my ward, but I am concerned about my residents, obviously. And I just don't see how anything there can avoid the problem. It just seems to me that it is a risk that we don't need to take. All the other banks on the high road are much further away. These are at the confluence of three shopping roads, Chiswick High Road, Devonshire Road and Turnipin Terrace, and they could have high usage. And everybody's going to be milling around the market stalls as well. So it's it's a mixture of having two, it's really about having too many people in one short space, really. Um, the, the area being used is quite different from St Albans, which is where the other market that Jenny Titmus runs takes place. I've looked online at photos and the area taken up by that market is really much, quite considerably much wider with the market stalls all in a row. This is going to be a slightly different layout. So my other concern is this particular spot at the end of Devonshire Road moving east, which again isn't in my ward, where there's a little circular area with steps coming up, benches on either side, and those benches are used all the time by people either having a break in carrying heavy shopping or stopping to have their ice cream from the ice cream shop that is very nearby. It's a very popular ice cream shop. It has a large queue, particularly at weekends when people do tend to go out for treats. And uh, it's very difficult in that queue, which was obviously going to have families in it. Families will bunch together and spread themselves east and west of the queue. They won't spread themselves out back to front. So whilst we can have the two metres between people who are separate from each other, there will be bunches. And so I'm concerned about the really high level of people that there are going to be milling around the stalls, the stalls blocking the benches and making it very difficult to be socially distanced from the, the ice cream queue. And we all want the ice cream shop to do really well. We all want people to walk up and enjoy the market. And I'm just not happy that this particular spot is right for stalls. I completely understand. I'm sure that continuity is part of the, the problem with organising a market or not part of the problem, but part of the reason of holding it. And you want to have a continuous flow. But if you're going to have marshals who are worrying about social distancing, it seems to me that marshals can say, please walk along to the stalls a bit further along and so they don't feel quite so separate. I suspect that's a concern that Jennifer has. So it's, it's really about being COVID secure, allowing plenty of space, not blocking this very important thoroughfare where people do stop and sit and being careful around banks. So I'm not against the market. I'm not against it in COVID as long as everything is COVID secure, but I do have those two main concerns. And if you look at the photos, 
there are the photos, so I haven't got a photo, obviously we haven't got a photo of St Albans, but the photo which has a, a stand for Ducci at the front of it does give a rather more wide angled view of the area than is reality. So I don't want you to fall into the trap of thinking there's an awful lot of space there. As soon as you get market stalls with people milling, that space is going to be significantly reduced. And you can see from the following photo how much the benches are used and valued by people in Chiswick when they're shopping or just enjoying perambulating along the high road. So I think that's all I want to say, Chairman. Right. Thank you, Councillor Little. Um, I'm going to go to um, the councillors first. Um, I can only see Councillor Giles at present at the moment. I don't know if Councillor Yogi is uh, still with us. No? But I'm going to ask anyway, uh, uh, Councillor Giles, do you have any questions of Councillor Bidoff? Um, are there any concerns about uh, having the um, market in the area where the flower market also has its space? Uh, no, I think we've seen from the flower market how it can be done. Uh, it's presumably there's going to be some kind of matching up. There was a complaint actually from one shop owner about the second flower market whose shop was blocked by stalls. But I don't think that the plan for the, this market would create that problem. But just to add that any stores when set up in that area should allow free access to the shops that are there that are open because they one of them said that they only did 20 percent of their normal trade on a Sunday last Sunday um, with the last flower market. And obviously we want them to survive as well. Yes, it has to be a success. So bear in mind that. It's fine. Um, uh, 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 Councillor Furt, that's all I have uh, at home. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Charles. Councillor Georgi, uh, have you have got any questions of Councillor Bidoff? I'm not at this moment. Thank you, Chair. OK. Um, I haven't got any questions. I only got one point to make, and that is that the I think it ought to be underlined that the granting uh, of a licence will not in any way override any of the COVID-19 procedures that may be in place, whether they're worse or better than they are at the moment so i think that you know we, we don't know whether you know hopefully it's it's not going to last six months but we don't know that so the license in itself is is is, is not it does not overrule any covid19 they are the they are the regulations that would be paramount um so now i'm going to move on to um the other persons uh, making objections. I've got Ray Elias. This one. Is he, is Chair, he here? I don't believe they're going to be attending either of the uh, objectors. Oh, Ray Elias and Jill Spencer. Spencer. Yeah, I believe they're not going those. to attend. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. that's right. Well, it's, it's been well, really written yeah. reports, but of course that doesn't give us the chance to ask questions. OK. Um, so we've got other persons. Let me jump ahead. Right. So I have nothing left now but to ask the applicant um, to make uh, their presentation. Okay, can, do you want me to speak now? Yes, please. Yeah. Hey, hi, I'm Jenny Titmers and I'm the applicant uh, for the antique and vintage street market on Chiswick High Road. So I've just got a four minute thing I want to read out um, and we'll take it from there. Okay. A monthly antique and vintage street market on Chiswick High Road would bring visitors, vibrancy and opportunity to an already popular and atmospheric community, help improve the potential for local shops and businesses, particularly after such a hard and turbulent year, with perhaps more hardship to come in the short term. An event in a community like this should be embraced and seen as an opportunity for everyone. The market will purposely, purposefully not come with any outside food or catering outlets, allowing all existing eateries and coffee shops 
to benefit from the extra trade on market days. Obviously, at present, times are precarious and hard since the COVID-19 pandemic hit, but the market should not be denied a licence to operate on that basis. Since out of a lockdown scenario, street markets have been allowed to operate legally with safe provisions in place, allowing for social distancing and appropriate access to existing shops. From my point of view, all safety aspects would be responsibly and firmly implement, implemented and adhered to. As you can see from the application, risk assessments and health and safety reviews, these would be at the forefront of the planning and continually monitored. It would also be monitored on a month to month basis and should it for any reason be deemed not safe to go in ahead any particular month, it would without doubt be cancelled. This stance is taken not just in a COVID-19 capacity, but also for inclement weather, forecasts and any environmental or social issues. Think too of the future. With the introduction of a vaccine, we are seeing an end to the pandemic and denying a licence to operate now would be blinkered and short-sighted. We'll be looking forward to success and opportunity in a post-COVID scenario. I know that another safety concern has been raised in regard to scamming and pickpocketing around the two bank sites, Metro Bank and Barclays, and particularly the ATM machines. I also note that Chiswick High Road is not an area renowned for this type of crime at all and never has been. Given that my research has identified this information and that Metro Bank doesn't even have an ATM machine outside, I think concern for the potential of this type of activity should be no more of a worry than of a normal day's trading on Chiswick High Road with people milling and I stress milling about. Whilst I'm not dismissing this, <coughs> Uh, that this could uh, could add a potential problem at the market, it would then be looked at and addressed in a totally responsible way. Understandably, there is one concern around the current traffic issues on the high road, given that these are temporary and should ultimately improve the conditions on the high road. A licence should not be denied on that basis. Again, the longer term scenario and the positive aspects the market would bring should all be considered. I have designed and proposed I have designed a proposed layout of the market purposely to accommodate traders in area where they can safely pitch, allow pedestrians, visitors and shoppers ongoing safe and comfortable access to the existing businesses in both a COVID and post-COVID scenario. Also, it will always be responsibly monitored and should any position prove problematic, it will be a changed addressed and changed if necessary. Overall, the positive aspects that a vibrant and successful antique and vintage street market can bring to the area are obvious to me and to the many, many people sent messages in support of the application and how the knock-on effect of its success would benefit the whole of the community. The three objections are not an accurate view of how the market would be embraced. Although very valid observations, I hope that I have addressed them appropriately and it is obvious that the market should be allowed to go ahead. It will do, if the market is, is allowed to go ahead, it will do so responsibly and with the safety of everyone concerned at its forefront. And that's it. Here end is my message. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll go first to uh, uh, Councillor. Adriana, Georgie, for to ask any questions of the app. Thank you, Chair. I really appreciate. Um, I yes, I had uh, I had questions related to um, COVID, and even though you're going to say okay, it's health and safety, it was just about um, how how uh, are they monitoring the staff that comes to uh, the member of staff that comes to. Uh, be at the stores um, if, they are, if anyone has um, any typical symptoms of COVID because they will if they will be handling and they will deal with with customers um how would you be monitoring that um when you say staff I, I'm assuming you mean each each trader on uh, correct yes, the, correct the, yeah each the, trader let's put it that way um well <clears throat> I mean obviously as with all scenarios I say to them first of all first first and foremost don't even turn up on the day if you are experiencing any symptoms whatsoever. Um, 
and uh, um, you know unfortunately we've got that in life in general I think rather than um, rather than just in this scenario and if you and if during the daytime you and you know you feel any symptoms coming on just pack up and go home and um, I although it's not a legal requirement because it's outdoors I do ask all of them to consider wearing a mask all the time thank you and one more question how would you respond to a fire in case of a fire mm, um, to be honest, I, ha I, I haven't um, considered it, but it certainly will be considered. Um, well, because it's open, it's quite easy to, it would be quite easy to uh, to leave the area quite safely. Um, I always have a megaphone and, it, and there are certain times, for example, on the risk assessment um, for the COVID, it, you know, if I consider there are too many people around, I just go around with my megaphone asking everyone to leave the area, asking all the stall holders to stop selling. And with a fire scenario, I would do exactly the same. Right. Um, would you ask one more question and that, that I'll be all. Um, would you have a dedicated person um, um, agent who's going to oversee the queues and um, social distancing? Um, no, not, not a dedicated person. Um, I, I'm, I'm always on site and I always have um, one other, uh, certainly one other and possibly two other people on site. We mo monitor the whole situation all day and um, I, I, what I want to do, I, I don't really want to compare it to the flower market, but I am going to compare it to the flower market in terms of, um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, making a queuing situation, i.e. for the flower market, certainly for the first one, it ju just made, as far as I'm concerned, the whole situation much, much worse. The queue was down a pavement area, which then obviously blocked it so that nobody else could pass by because there was this huge queue. The huge queue wasn't socially distanced. And it, um, it, as far as I'm concerned, it just made a whole situation much, much worse. So therefore, I think it's far better, because, and, and remember it's a much more spaced out area than the flower market area. Um, it's far better to just literally walk up and down and monitor the situation as it goes. Um, and and should, it, should it feel necessary that there are too many people, um, then start evacuating. Right, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Yes. Right, OK. Councillor Giles, do you have any questions? Of course. Oh, of course I do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever made me think otherwise. <laughs> um, thank you, Jenny, for your presentation. Um, I was just wondering um, how many people are in your team who help you with um, setting up your markets and, um, and, and managing and coordinating days, uh, the event day? Uh, well, generally, um, I only have two people on. Well, first, first of all, I have two, two people in my team, although I have access to. Uh, well, I mean, there are people coming earlier and helping to set up and then they go away. But there are two people on site. But I can have access to other more, more people if, if uh, it's deemed necessary. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, that's it. I can I can have access to as many as I think necessary. Although I do think you you honestly can overload these things. Yeah. So um, yeah, obviously there's a balance. Um, how many stalls are at your current market in St Albans? Well, um, pre-COVID, uh, the the um, the capacity was 80, and then in this COVID situation, we have you know it changes every month, but it's between sort of 50 and 60 and that's it you know all socially distanced stalls and with queues pointing in certain directions and you know everyone doing their bit if you like so yeah. I I uh, on the couple of days before the market I write to everybody who's coming along to trade telling them exactly with a map exactly where they're, they're going to be pitched and what way any potential queue and bear in mind there's not normally a queue you know, like you would see, I don't know, outside the co-op at the moment or something. Um, it's more of a milling rather than a queuing situation. Yeah. So what people kind of browsing, seeing what they can see, if they want, then they might kind of. And, and, 
be perfectly honest, everyone, uh, in my experience up until now, because we started back operating in June once we came out of the initial lockdown, um, everyone is very, very wary and, and very capable of kind of looking after themselves. And, or they seem to be, you know, everyone seems very happy. They're there because they come along because they are happy to come along, first of all. Um, and, and they're, you know, they're very courteous of, of all the rules and regulations. I have um, big signage on each of the stalls saying, you know, COVID-19, uh, they all, all my stall holders supplies, hand sanitizers, and asking everyone to consider, because you can't ask them to actually wear, to consider wearing masks, keep sanitizing your hands, wash your hands more than you would do, and all of the, you know, the rules and regulations that are about at the moment. Yeah. And to be honest, I haven't had any negative comments um you know i think it's one of those situations where people come if they want to yeah fantastic and um so i see that you're applying your, your operation hours will be from 9 a.m to 3 p.m on the second sunday of each month um what about things like setting up the gazebos and kind of dismantling everything um yeah. what's your lead in time for that do you need um kind of the parking to be removed from the night before type thing um, well, I, I've spoken to your highways chap who um, says he would cordon off um, the the bit where the flower market is, which I think is yeah. called uh, Market Terrace or something. Uh, it's, yeah, no, it's yeah. not. There was um, never, never traditionally been a market there before until this year, so. Uh, yes, I mean, yeah. I'm yeah. going to be or something. Yes, yeah, so um, anyway, that could be cordoned off the night before. Um, and I, I am very, very happy to send in a sort of night watchman, if, it, if you like, if you, if you want to call them that, yeah. um, to monitor it. Obviously, once people start chucking out of restaurants and things and taking their cars away, um, it, you know, because there's no point in calling it off from six o'clock on, onwards. And that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Much later on and having a night watchman sit there and just make sure that it's free for the next morning. Um, so in terms of setting up, um, I currently say to people to get there, get there no earlier than 7am and then they pitch up, um, they can bring their cars onto the site until 8.30 and then they must, their cars must leave the site, um, just so it's just for unloading. Yeah. Uh, and then they go and, you know, park safely and all the rest of it. Um, and then they're allowed back on from three. So it's generally um, it's generally packed up by hmm, 4.30, 5 o'clock. Yeah, it's always easier to take things down than put them up. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think um, the, the gazebo issue um, is, it, 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 I'm, I'm obviously just referring to St Albans because we've always had market stalls, but COVID has now introduced a new thing and, and now St Albans are not supplying market stalls. So whereas some, some of my traders have had the market stalls built for them and others prefer to bring their gazebo, mm -hmm. one now has to bring their own gazebo. So I've been I've been tossing around in my head a, a scenario where I supply the gazebos and have a team put them up. But actually um, it's I, I think on balance it is far better that everyone brings their own but obviously, it, I then go through each, it go, once they're built, I go through each and every one and make sure they're all safe in terms of being weighted down and, you know, all the rest of the, the health and safety issues. Yeah, yeah. And um, looking at the plans um, and, and knowing Chiswick Cairo quite well, and the fact that I was out there measuring some of those pinch points today, um, given the space of the gazebos, space that you need to allow for the periphery, and the 1.8 meter width ways. Do you think that um, that your plans are um, accurate enough in detailing what space will be available to the public domain um, once stalls are up? Um, I do. The whole of the route. I mean, I would say I do. I, I would say that, but um, I, actually, I do because I because I'm doing it all the time anyway. In terms of you know, literally getting out, um, and I have been on Chiswick High Road and and measured it with a tape measure all the way and worked out, you know, really carefully. So I am confident that 
Um, it's correct. Yeah. yeah. And it's acceptable. Yeah. yeah. I, am, I am very confident of that. And um, obviously, are you kind of hoping that there won't be kind of like a cordon around this whole area, but people can just come in and out as they wish? I do, yes, I, I don't. I don't. I personally don't think there should be a cordon because I think it creates far more problems than, for example, there's, there's a cordon around it. I, on the first one, I came with a girlfriend to the flower market, mm -hmm. wanted to go and have brunch in the fire station. Um, that's cordoned off. Uh, you have to wait in the queue, even though my brunch is booked in, in the fire station. So then I had to hustle my way to the front of the queue. And then you come out of the fire station after your brunch and you're in, in the in it anyway so it i just think it creates more problems and um it it, it should be left to flow quite naturally yeah it, but also obviously being being what carefully watched as well yeah so i i'm concerned about pinch points around um like hogarth statue and even down further by gbk and where the road narrows with south beach Yes. I think that's the narrowest part of the road from what I was able to measure with my two metre measuring yes. tape today. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously I've addressed it all again in, in my mind. Um, and, you know, very, very honestly, until you're on the ground with these things in a in a situation, live situation, if you like, yeah. then they're, they're not always apparent. And yeah. um, I think as I said my, in my view here, that um, sh that will always be monitored. Should it happen, it, it, won't, it wouldn't happen again. Yeah. I've gone up as far as South Beach because literally that is where it, sort of from the bus stop, it goes much, much narrower. Yeah. Um, um, so I've gone as far as I, I think it, you know, because you've also got pedestrian crossing there and all the rest of it. So um, I think I, I've gone as 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 far as I can see without it being live, that would be acceptable. When it goes live and and something does show its head, if it does, then it will be addressed immediately. Okay, fantastic. I've just got two more questions. Sorry. So outside of the pack course in Talbot, um, <laughs> there is a service road that you re referred to. Um, yeah. Is the intention that the the gazebos will be on the pavement or will they be on that road bit? I have spoken to um, M Mark, isn't it, Mark? Um, the highways man. Yes, yeah. and um, we have agreed that they would be better in the middle of the, the scenario in the road. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, it then allows free flow of sort of either side. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I just realised I had another one. Uh, so, and then if um, Cycleway 9 designs change so that what has been built then moves back onto the pavements, mm -hmm. um, do you have any idea of what your contingencies might be? Uh, no, only that it's a movable feast because it's, you know, literally built on the day. Um, it, 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 can all, it can all be moved and, and if something happens, you know, if there's a water leak and half of the pavement's dug up, well, then we can't we can't use that. And and the same the same as it would be with a cycle way. Yeah. Piece and it can all be addressed. Yeah. I think that's the I think that's the really positive aspect of it is that it can flow with with life really. Okay. And then uh, the last question was about um, removal of waste. And I know you alluded to this in your application. Um, and, and so I, I was just wondering about how, how do you enforce that all traders take their, their, um, their waste with them? It's part of their terms and conditions that I have to, um, but also um, if you imagine a scenario that we're wandering up and down while they're packing away and, um, you know, it, it, any waste I see, anything, you know, flowing about, I just say, can you pick it up, take it with you? Um, so I'm very vigilant on that. I, I mean, I will say that um, in St Albans, um, they have they they have their regular um, vio, 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 violia yeah. Yeah. every day to clear up after a general day's trading anyway, and they have never ever deemed it necessary to have any extra um, street cleaning. So I think I think that might need some further um, investigation on your part. And, Again, and... I spoke to Mark Frost about yeah. that. He yeah. said, well, 
you know, let's let's see how it goes, and it and if it deems that that we need extra, then then we we'll look at it. Yeah. But, you know, we have both addressed it. Yeah. Um, Richard, uh, Councillor Foot, I think that's it for me at the moment. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much, uh, Gabriella. Um, right, I've got very little. Um, can I just a couple of things really on the uh, situation with um, the trade, uh, the uh, anybody that has a pavement or a temporary street trading license for that area? Uh, do we know of anyone? Are you aware of any that, that already would sort of clash with what you're doing? No, I can see Councillor Bidot's shaking her head, so I'm, I'm bowing to expert opinion. <laughs> so, <coughs> Richard, can I add, I know that GBK have had seating out on the street outside of theirs, outside of their premises in non-COVID time, um, but I don't, uh, and, and there are some, there used to be some tables outside the Packhorse and Talbot, um, but I don't know of anything else. Okay, okay. That, that, that's general licensing, though that's not for street markets. It's not, this is a different thing. No, no, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of, um, there's still any, any tables and chairs that are on the pavement require a license. Yes, yeah, that's, um, and, and that's why I'm asking because, you know, if somebody's got a license and then the antiques market is coming along and says, sorry, you can't have your tables and chairs on the pavement today, or, or vice versa, and we end up with, a punch up on there or something. Yeah, oh. so the fire station does actually. Yeah. But that's on another. My understanding is that these market stores are on the other side. Yeah. Aren't they? So they're opposite. It shouldn't be a clash, but it does limit the space for social distancing. That's. Yeah, that's I. Because um, we don't have either, either of the, any of the officers there that I think could actually answer that question about who's got those licenses. I don't know um, uh, whether. Um, it's, it's not really true, it's, uh, yeah. Um, I believe there are a certain few along there that do have um, tables and chairs license or pavement licenses at the moment. Yeah. I can't offhand tell you which, uh, which have and which haven't, but definitely for the old fire station, um, I think Packhorse and Talbot do, um, but I don't, I don't know if they always have them out. It, it, it's generally up to the, the, the license holder to decide that. And GBK, as Gabriella mentioned. Yeah. OK. Uh, I thought you meant street stores specifically, Richard, which is why no, I should. No, 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 I was just thinking, okay. that, you know, because obviously we've issued licenses to people. And yeah. on, on a good day, people. Have, 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 you, have you been made aware of any existing license holders along there? Have I had any? Sorry, Sorry. what was your question? Sorry. I'm saying Jennifer. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Did you, really you, were you made aware of anybody that has a, a street traders license along there? No, I've been aware. I haven't been made aware of any. I know um, that the fire station has because I've seen them, mm. but because the market would be literally in the sort of car parking area, if you like, it it wouldn't affect it at all. And and the and the the area sort of. Uh, Bit hard to describe it so there's the street area where they've got their seating and then the the first part of the car parking area which is cordoned off anyway um to allow for social distancing that the that Hounslow did themselves mm. that's all i can see of it but no i'm not aware of anyone okay um, okay um and, and the, the other it. area um I, you you've seen this temporary street trading license conditions paper at all, Jennifer? Yes. You have seen it. So item nine on there talks about um, that. I believe this was during the flower market that I mean, these were conditions that were applied to the flower market. Yeah. But the area between Devonshire Road and Annadale Road must not be used for stalls or other market activities. Um, how would that impact upon you? Um. I don't know, to be honest. Um, it's the I'm bit in your to, middle map, isn't it? Isn't map number I'm going to picture the actual that, that actual bit, which I yeah. think it's. I think you're referring to a service road, aren't you? Am I right? Um, uh, no, well, it uh, just says. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, sorry. Five road. Is that is that is that what you're referring to? 
Sorry, I'm just no, I've, I've seen Annadale Road and Devonshire Road. It's between. Now that's on on your maps. Um, it's map number two. It appears mm -hmm. in the middle there, just off the Chiswick High Road is where you are. That's Annadale Road, then going along the Devonshire Road. Chairman, in there, you. in the actual area, I can only see three stalls. Is that right? Yes, that's the area that I was concerned about because that's where people come up the stairs, sit on the benches, and it's in front of Odono's ice cream parlour. So that's the, B, I see what you the mean, precise yeah. location that I was concerned about. Uh, yes, I, I mean, I, I can, I can, I totally uh, acknowledge what you're concerned about, and it can be relooked at if, if it is deemed a problem, it can be certainly relooked at and relocated. It, you know, it's not a, like I say, it's not set in stone. And if it is really deemed a problem, then it can, it, it, it really shouldn't, it, you know, it shouldn't have to be a problem because it can be, it can be readdressed. I, what I wouldn't want is for it, for the whole proposal to be turned down on that basis, because it, you know, it literally can be changed. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's my reason for asking you that question. Uh, right now, um, we don't have any officers that made any contributions, did we? Um, seems such a long time ago. Uh, so I'm um, moving on. There's nobody from other persons that was present to ask any questions. Um, so what I'm going to do now. Um, sorry, I'll ask any of the members. Do you have any other questions to come back on at all? Um, yes, I do. OK, Councillor. Sorry, uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, thank you, Councillor Foote. Um, Jenny, so I know that you've got 27 stalls east of Devonshire Road, just to go back on to, um, on to Councillor Foote's point. Um, and then you've got uh, the remainder kind of in that car parking area. Um, is that feasible for you to continue operating with just that space in the in in the in the in that traditional space as it were where the car park is sorry i don't get what you mean is it right. to if you out? have if that you, you mean? i'm not sure what you mean yeah sorry let me start again so um is it's I, I so what you have a 37 stalls up to devonshire road if you're going west to east right from the Chiswick, from the the from the police station up to Devonshire Road. Yes. Is it yeah, feasible yeah. for you to operate on that model? Yes. As far as I'm concerned, yes. Like I say, I've I've been there on my hands and knees measuring. Um, yeah. So yes. Uh, clearly, uh, like I said before, it it's a movable feast. But as far as I'm concerned, it is perfectly uh, safe and acceptable within the you know COVID terms to operate on that basis. Yeah, OK, thank you, Richard. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Uh, Adriana, do you have any other questions? Yes, Richard, thank you. Um, in regards to handling money, um, how would you monitor that? Do you have any contactless options, Jenny? Uh, well, because each of these stalls are obviously all their own individual businesses, um, right. You know, it's not. It's obviously you know they they all have their own individual um, perspective on it, and um, some of them, or a lot, quite a lot of them, actually have got the contactless machines. Others do take cash, um, and obviously there are no legal requirements with regard to any of it. Um, so they, there's a mixture of both. They all have hand sanitizers and and, and all the rest of it too keep everybody safe um so yes it's a it's it's the individual's take on it i think really is, is the answer to that one okay yep and uh, may i ask another question how much a trader uh, would pay for one of the um gazebos so a trader pays 60 pounds for a pitch and they all have to have um a, a public five million pounds public liability insurance which i and and everything is um, you know I have files and files of all of that. They're all I, every time it's renewed because it's an annual thing. 
and um, as on a, on a Hounslow council thing, they have to have with Nicola Harbour in in licensing, they also have to have, um, an ID card to be a trader, which they have to pay Hounslow Council, I think, 20, 20 or £30, pounds if Nicola's there, perhaps you can confirm it. It's £30 pounds for an ID card, yeah. Right, OK. And how, I know that I've seen that you do have a public liability insurance, but how would you verify if the, the companies have, or would you be doing that, or if it doesn't make officers? Uh, yeah, all their individual public liability insurance, I see them all. Uh, they have to supply me with, they have to go through a, a, an application process so that I know what they're selling, the type of things they're selling, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. They have to supply me with their public liability insurance certificate. Um, I put them all on file and I remind them all as it runs out that I want to see the updated one. All right, thank you very much, Jenny. Thank you, Chair. Right, thank you, Jenny. Um, I've got no further questions. Um, right, I really, if you'd like to uh, uh, to sum up, Jenny, uh, but uh, preferably without introducing any new material. But if you've got anything else to say, that perhaps just to reinforce what you've already said, then um, this is your opportunity. But I haven't got anything prepared. I I I only want to say that I I totally get everyone's concerns um, but honestly it is such a nice thing to have and uh, you know and I know I would say that but it, it, it is honestly it provides the, the amount of people that come up to me and say oh my god this is lovely it is you know it just blows me away because I wouldn't keep doing it if, if I but but it's such a nice thing to have and Chiswick in particular is such a nice place it's such a fitting place for it that I, that I think that once we can address and get over any concerns, it, it wouldn't, you know, it would just, it would just go from strength to strength. Right. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, right. Um, now, office, no, not officers, our legal representative. Can I see, do you want to, uh, just run through what we've now got to do on the procedures. Sorry, can you use your mute? Still on mute. Uh. Sorry, I think I'm on. Yeah, I'm, I'm unmuted. Sorry about that. Uh, now, Chair, in terms of procedure from this point onwards, if you and the other panel members are satisfied with all the representations and presentations that you've had, um, we can uh, now take a break and uh, uh, go into our deliberation room for you and the other panel members to reach a decision. Um, in terms of timing, uh, it's now just 18 minutes past four. And so as soon as we're done, we will come back to this room uh, live to uh, confirm the decision. Right. Thank you, Anis. Right. OK, so what um, myself, uh, my fellow councillors and our legal representative now do is, is retire to the meeting room. Can I ask, um, if uh, any of those that are remaining here, if you turn off your microphones, because uh, otherwise um, any rude comments you might be making about us will be <laughs> recorded. We might not be there, but we'll find out. Uh, so anyway, yeah, if you could just uh, mute your microphones whilst, whilst we're away. I'd hope we wouldn't be away for more than 15 minutes. If it does appear that it's going to go on longer than that, then I, we will feed our information back to our uh, controller who will then advise uh, the, the participants that we're here. OK, so. Can I ask, Bill, can I ask you to, uh, is it possible to text me or something to so I can dial in again when it's when it's necessary to? Uh, yeah, is Bill there? Is that, Bill? Yeah. You're able to do that? I am councillor. Yep. Thank um, you very much. If you can do that, I would be note. very much appreciative. Yeah, I'll just make a quick note of your number. You are the one that ends 852, aren't you? Um, or am I looking at the wrong person? It, that's the landline. 7701. Uh, ah, oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. There. Yeah, that's 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 the correct number. Um, 
852 Bill. Oh, right. I'm oh, good. Speaking from, but that's not the. Um, I want you to text me on my mobile, obviously. Oh, I thought that was your mobile. I'm sorry. It's because no. I saw the sevens there. Okay. <laughs> um, you've sent me your mobile number, haven't you, though, Mr. Thomas? I'm pretty certain I did in an email a week or so ago. Yeah, I think you did. If not, okay. I'll do an urgent email straight back at you. Okay, so can I, I can hang up, can I, and then... You can. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, and win. Yep. Thank you very much. So for... about 15 minutes, I would expect. Okay, thank you. Right, okay. Bye now. Right. Can we all uh, retire now to the uh, to the other room? So find my things. Um,
Right, who have we got? We got Canates, myself. Um, Richard, I'm here. I think we're waiting for. Yeah, I don't know whether Bill was going to uh, text somebody, wasn't he? Are you there, Bill? Yes, you're supposed to text uh, the applicant because she did say she was going to go offline. OK. I... Bill's currently not here yet, Chair. Oh, he's not? Oh, right. Not here, not here yet, no. Right. And he's the one that's got the text number. Somebody's uh, showing a bit of professionalism on their keyboard. Oh, sorry, that's me. I'll turn off my mic. <laughs> so who else are we missing? We've got everybody bar Bill and the applicant, haven't we? Uh, oh, we've got three on there now. Sadiq's on there. Does Bill know we're back, Sadiq? Do you know? I've just dropped him a message. All right, OK. No, I didn't know if he you know, was out the back doing some barbecuing or anything. <laughs> doing the burgers. <laughs> Let, let's see if he's around. <laughs> Okay, I've just messaged him again. Um, hopefully, he should be joining soon. Okay, Sadiq, thank you. I've just realised I need to put a new battery in my clock. It's running <laughs> 15 minutes behind. So I sat here and it was getting darker and darker and darker. And I suddenly looked at it and I thought, oh my God, I haven't turned the light on. Yeah, I, know. I, was, I was living in my own shadow then. But I, I turned the light on uh, when we were outside. <laughs> I've uh, texted Ms Tetmus that you're back in, councillors. Oh, OK, Bill, did she respond? Um, not yet, but hopefully she'll be joining us soon. I know she was. She would have been waiting for it. OK. That's all. That's the only person we're waiting for, isn't it? 
It is part of it, yes. Tatiana back. Oh. Because I'm conscious we've got another one after this. Yeah. Hmm. We're all being present. Um, is the lady, Miss Jenny? Uh, yeah, she's, uh, I've just texted her to let her know. Um, she should be... Uh, is there... Hello, Jenny here. Oh, right. Okay, Jenny. Thank you. Hello. Right. Okay, we can... Uh, kick off now. OK. Um, right. The uh, members have considered the application. Yeah. Um, and we've agreed to uh, we've agreed to issue the uh, license. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so much. However, we would want to you to pay special attention to the technical considerations on page three of our uh, papers which um, reads the standard conditions allow maximum width of any licensed area which shall not exceed one third of the usable width of the footpath. Uh, a minimum unobstructed footpath width of 1.8 metres must be left clear and available and free from obstruction to allow for safe and convenient pedestrian movement. Yeah, um, of course. And we would uh, specifically uh, like you to uh, monitor and spade pay special attention to ensure that there is enough uh, space in between De Devonshire Road and Brackley Road between any of the, uh, the, the, the stalks. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So uh, apart from those, um, those conditions, um, we're happy. Thank you so yeah? much. Thank uh, you so much. That is, uh, two yeah, colleagues that is really, really, really no, that's that's great. Thank you. Yeah. What you what will happen now is that um, our legal advisor will draft out the full um, response to yourself. Yeah. You should receive that. I'm going to say five working days. Is that right? Sir? That's right, Chair. It's five working days. Um, so so uh, the the final decision will be, notification will be sent within that time period. OK. The only thing is, on the last meeting, my system seemed to crash somewhere in the middle of the five working days. Okay. <laughs> it took me, I think we actually took seven days because it took a bit longer to get okay. my. Okay, all right. Well, I'll, I will look out for it in due course anyway. Okay. Thank you anyway, so much. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thanks, Chair. Bye. Bye. Right, we now move on to item two on the agenda which is the Papa John's um, pizza, pizza, pizza restaurant, isn't it? Yeah. Um, let's get the pages. So this is from from page 36, yeah. Yeah. So, right. Sorry, Chair, before we begin, I'm not too sure if the uh, representative from Papa John's is actually still here. Um, I had to mute the microphone because his phone was making a noise while you were deliberating the previous application. Oh, so oh. I, may, I, may, I may just need to give him a quick call. OK, see, so we got, yeah. Is that one? Um, hello, this is Bill. Um, I can see the 758 phone number still there. He's got his, he's muted though. Oh, is that is that his phone? Is it? Yeah, uh, that, that's Mr. Sawa is the phone number ending 758. Uh, is, is that is it muted because you muted it, Sadiq? Uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, the phone was making noise through the deliberation period, so I had okay. to mute. Are you able to unmute it now? Or? Um, I had I did try to contact the gentleman um, over the phone, but he didn't pick up, so I'll, I'll do that again. Oh, I see. Okay. Sorry, Sadiq. I'll keep my nose out.
Uh, okay, I've just spoken to him, Chair. He, um, they, they are present. Um, we're just waiting for them to unmute the microphone so we can okay. continue. They should be they should be joining soon. OK, Rita, do we have any of the um, objectors present? Um, I think Bill said none of the objectors were coming except for Nishi and I think I saw Ian Inman online as well now. All right. Yeah, I, I'm here, councillor. I'm here, councillor. So no, no, none of the residents are here, councillor. Okay. It's Bill speaking. Um, the, none of the residents have replied to any correspondence with me at all. So they, they've not said they're not coming, but none of them have confirmed they have. None of them came to the rehearsal yesterday. So I think it's a reasonable assumption that if they're not here now, they weren't here yesterday, they've not contacted, they're not coming. So we, we certainly shouldn't wait for them. OK. Chair, I can confirm that um, the representative from Papa John's is here. OK, so are we waiting for anybody else? Bill, are we waiting for anybody else? Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Councillor, I was muted again. Um, not that I know of, no, we have Miss Titmus here. Um, we have the panel, we have Kelly's. Uh, OK, right. Sorry, Mr. Titmus, uh, that was not Ms. Titmus here. This is Mr. Sawa. That was the last one. My apologies, Mr. Sawa. Uh, we do have Mr. No Sawa. No problem. Right, OK. So I'm going to kick off. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to <laughs> subject you to the preamble. Um, right, so if we kick off now. So there are three panellists. Um, here this evening amongst ourselves who formerly sorry let's move on right it's now just coming up to five o'clock um so i'd like to welcome you all to this virtual meeting of hounslow's licensing panel i would like to welcome the members of the panel who are sitting today as well as council officers who will be assisting members throughout the meeting i would also like to welcome members of the public are watching this meeting at home. As you may all know, until recently, virtual meetings for council business were not legal. But as a result of the coronavirus pandemic and quarantine arrangements, the law has recently been changed to let local authorities, authorities meet in a virtual way to make decisions. Therefore, this meeting is taking place under government regulations. The way this meeting will work will be that as chair, I will be running the meeting, inviting people to speak. As it is easy for people to speak over each other in a meeting like this, I will ask each member or officer to speak in turn at the appropriate stage. This should mean that there would normally be no need for people uh, to interrupt or to ask to speak. I will make uh, sure that members have ample opportunity to ask questions and make comments on the reports on, on, on the application before us. The exception to this arrangement will be that legal committee or licensing officers who may turn on their microphone to alert me to any legal governance or planning issues that needs addressing. Although I'd expect this to be a rare occurrence. In addition, we have a producer of the meeting from our ICT department who also may wish to contact me if necessary. I think this is likely if all goes well, as we hope it will. The etiquette for members of the panel and for officers to speak will be to mute your microphones until such time as you're asked to speak. This means that only one person will be speaking at a time and there will be no background noises, making it easier for us all to follow the meeting and also for those watching at home. I would also ask members always to say who they are when they make a contribution and to speak slowly and clearly for the same reason. We have three members of the licensing committee with us today to form this licensing panel 
and it is we who will be making the decisions. Officers of the council will provide assistance and advice as required, but final decisions will be made by the members. Now, I'd like now to introduce the members who are here tonight one by one. So I ask uh, Councillor Adriano Giorgi to um, turn on a microphone or camera and unmute a microphone and introduce Thank you, me. Chair. Thank you, Chair. Good evening. Um, I'm Adriana George. I'm a councillor for Bedford and I'm, all, I'm also a um, team member of the licensing um, committee. Thank you. Can I also ask Councillor Gabriella Giles to introduce herself? Hi, good evening. I'm Councillor Gabriella Giles. I'm a ward councillor for Chiswick Riverside and a member of the licensing committee. Right, I've introduced myself. I'm Councillor Richard Foote. I'm a member uh, elected for Hamworth Ward and I'm chair of the licensing committee. Um, I'm now going to ask officers that are present. Um, so we have can I ask the officers to introduce themselves? But this isn't the time when you've been making your presentations, but just introducing yourself. So, Rita. Is Rita there? Sorry, Chair. It appears that Rita's just dropped out. Uh, she may have just lost connection or something. Uh, okay, just well, I'll carry on with others because we will need to come back to Rita because she'll be the one that will be kicking it off. Yeah. Um, Nicola is not on this one. Uh, Nishi, Nishi Patel, are you there? Hi. Yes, yeah, Chair. You could just I'm introduce here. yourself, Nishi. Of course. I'm Nishi Patel. I'm the Licensing Enforcement Manager. Right. Thank you, Nishi. Ian, Ian Inman. Afternoon, Chair. I'm Ian Inman, uh, a Principal Regulatory Officer from the Neighbourhood Enforcement Team, which is or was formerly the Noise Pollution Team. So I'm technically the specialist in noise. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. And uh, Ken Eats, our legal advisor. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Kenny Sally. I'm uh, the lawyer advising the panel this evening. Right. Has Rita returned to the fold? Still no sign of Rita chat. I'm just messaging her quickly, see if she's OK. OK. I'm, I'm, I'm going to push on and then when Rita does... Hello, hi, sorry, um, Chair. I've just had a message from Rita. Uh, she can't log back in. She's been trying. So is it possible to just read the report as is? So who's that speaking? This is Nishi. I apologise. Oh, OK, Nishi. Yeah. OK, well, look, I'm going to, I'm going to continue with the re, uh, the report. And if, if Rita manages to come back in, then OK. Um, yes. Then I'll have to take guidance on where we go from there. If it doesn't. Thank you, Chair. Right. OK, so. Um, if we can all now mute our microphones again, uh, members of the public are reminded that the agenda and all the reports being considered by the panel today can be found on the Council website under the licensing panel meetings page. So if you want to see them, that's where to look. I also want to make sure that all members have seen the agenda and reports. I know they have because we've done it all before. <laughs> so I would like to remind members that they need to hear all of the evidence in each report we're considering tonight. This means that you should listen to the whole debate. This is a legal requirement. Should you find you're having technical difficulties and need to log out of the meeting and come back in again, please let me know immediately. Ideally beforehand, but if not afterwards, by turning on your mic. This would be a permitted interruption. We can then decide how far we need to recap if that's necessary, or if the member needs not to vote on that item. Finally, I would say that any member of the public listening or watching, thank you for joining us this evening. We hope this meeting will go well, but any virtual meetings may suffer from an unexpected technical hitch, so please bear with us. I should also clarify that this meeting is being recorded and will be made available on the Council's YouTube channel in the next few days. Contributors to this meeting are asked to remember that they will therefore be included in the recording of this public meeting. Thank you. Uh, we we'll now move on to the uh, item on the agenda, 
which is, uh -oh, you get my pages right, Papa John's Pizza, 329 to 331 London Road, Isleworth. Um, all right, let me get my. It's the trouble when we've got two meetings, I've got two lots of notes. Right, I'll scout the lip. Right, when we go back. Right, so we're going to be considering the application from Papa John's. Um, is Rita rejoined us yet? No? No, Chair, not yet, unfortunately. Okay. Um, hmm. Can eat. Um, it would be normal that Rita, as the uh, licensing officer, would read out the uh, conditions with this. Um, I'm trying to think if we've got any way around. Um, hmm. Nicola's not still with us, is she? As the other licensing officer, Bill. Um, no, she's not, Chair. Um, have you got any thoughts on how we can get round this? Well, there, there's unfortunately no way of getting round the inability of the panel to quit or the applicant to question the licensing officer. Yeah, I know. Well, it, it's it's whether or not they'd agree with the circumstances described in the officer's yeah. report. Um, well, we, we can, we, I can. Um, read out the officer's report from the agenda, but of course can't answer any questions as, or anybody can read it, but can't answer the questions. Well, as let's like, move one stage at a time, Bill, then. Let's, okay. let's get you to read it. Yep. And then we'll see if they've got any, if we've got any problems with stage two. Of course, yep. I'll just sum it up. Okay, get in there, get in there. Oh, computer. Computers always go slow when you, you urgently want something, don't they? It's called Sod's Law. It is, yeah. Um, they normally right. read out the whole thing, don't they? Sorry, Councillor, I'm back. Oh, oh, I was just about to start. You <laughs> saved Bill's life. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just got kicked out of everything. I'm I'm sorry about that. Right. Well, we we actually at, at, it's at your stage now. So okay. I'm asking right. you to give your presentation. Okay. Just bear with me a minute. Nick of time there. <laughs> so I was about to start uh, reading out for you in the hope that you'd re return. Okay. I'm not going to risk putting the camera on in case it goes wrong again. So I'll just read out if that's okay. Yep, that's fine, Rita. Okay, uh, so members are requested to determine an application for the grant of a premises license in respect of Papa John's Pizza at 329 to 331 London Road, Isleworth. The recommendations are to grant the application in full on the terms and conditions contained within the application to include any applicable mandatory conditions, to grant the license application as above, modified to such an extent as considered appropriate to satisfy any relevant representations and promote the licensing objectives or to reject the application in whole or in part. This application was submitted by PJ West Limited. The application is for the provision of late night refreshment, Sunday to Thursday, 2300 hours to two o'clock in the morning, Friday to Saturday, 2300 hours to 3 a.m. Um, they want some seasonal variations for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, again 2300 hours to 4 a.m. in the morning. Opening hours are Sunday to Thursday 11 to 2 o'clock in the morning, Friday to Saturday 11 to 3 a.m. New Year's Eve and New Year's Day 11 o'clock to 4 a.m. The application has attracted representations from local residents 
uh, and there's been representations from the noise pollution team and licensing enforcement authority that have not been resolved yet. Thank you, councillor. Right, thank you very much. Now I'm going to ask the applicant um, if they agree the circumstances as described by the officer. Uh, and, and just to clarify, this is not the time yet for them to put their own case. It's just to get confident whether or not you uh, agree with the facts as the officer has outlined. Uh, yes, I agree with that completely. Oh, OK, that's fine. Thank you very much. So we now move on to um, those that are the authorities that are making presentation. So initially, that is Nissi Patel, yeah? Nissi? Yes, Chair, Nissi Patel, yeah. I'm the licensing enforcement manager, so um, I can read my rep. Yeah, OK. All right, I'll risk putting my camera on, but I will be reading, so fingers crossed. OK. All right. Um, uh, licensing panel, good evening. Um, I've put a representation in as the licensing responsible authority because Papa John's have asked for hours in a residential area that we have objections to. He's not got back to us, so I will read them. Um, so the first one was to prevent crime and disorder. The premises shall install and maintain a comprehensive CCTV system as per the minimum requirements of the Hounslow Police Licensing Team. All entry and exit points will be covered, enabling front, um, frontal identification of every person entering in any like condition. The CCTV system shall continue to rec continually record whilst the premises and open, is open for licensing activities and during all times when customers remain on the premises. All recordings shall be stored for a minimum period of 31 days with date and time stamping. Viewing of recordings shall be made available immediately upon the request of a police or authorised officer throughout the entire 31 day period. A staff member from the premises who is conversant with the operation of the CCTV system shall be on the premises at all times when the premises are open. This staff member must be able to provide a police or authorised council officer copies of the recent CCTV images or data with the absolute minimum of delay when requested. Under public safety, certificates of safety re all elect electrical items used, all fire safety measures to be in place regarding the extinguishers with the updated documents showing the testing, incident logbook to be updated as and when and to be signed daily, signs upstating to be mindful of the residents to leave quietly and in orderly manner. There shall be a personal license hold on duty um, as they've asked for alcohol, a noise limitate, a limitator must be fitted to the musical amplified system set at a level determined by and the satisfaction of an authorised officer um, so as to ensure that no noise nuisance is caused to local residents or businesses. The operation panel of the noise limiter shall be secured by a key or password to the satisfaction of officers from the Environmental Health Service and access shall only be personal persons authorised by the premises licence holder. The limiter shall not be altered without prior agreement to the Environmental Health Service. No alteration or modification to an existing sound system should be affected without prior knowledge of an authorised officer of the Environmental Health Service. No additional sound generating equipment shall be used to the premises without being routed through the sound limiter device. You are in close proximity to a residential area directly affected by the noise of scooters at at early hours is not acceptable. Alcohol consumed outside the premises building shall only be consumed by patrons seated um, at tables. A direct telephone number for the manager at the premise shall always be publicly available when the premises open. This telephone number is to be made available to residents and businesses in the vicinity. Um, 
Finally, I'd said that the application for the late night refreshment, they've put from 2300 hours to 2 a.m. Monday to Thursday and um, 23, um, which is 11 a.m. sorry, to 3 a.m. Friday and Saturday. This is excessive considering the premises site sits below and directly opposite residential premises. Um, happy for this to be amended to midnight but we've not had a response so hence i felt it was important to put a rep in because of the scooter noise and its residential area etc so i conclude the rep from the licensing authority can i just um underline uh, there is no application for alcohol license in this uh, application uh, i don't know uh, Maybe something that I don't know. No, it was primarily the noise of scooters. Yeah, no, I'm just. Well, you mentioned alcohol in your when you were reading out, but about there, but. Uh, oh, I see. I apologise. Yeah, it's. No I can take that bit out. My concern is to do with the timings of two a.m. Right. and three so a.m. So the timing yeah. between twenty-three hundred hours, um, and uh, the week of and oh, Monday to. Thursday, 2300 hours to 0200, and Friday, Saturday, 2300 hours to 0300, and Sunday, 2300 hours to 0200 of what's been applied for. Yep. So you yeah, should read 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. No, it's not a.m. Um, it's um, 2, 2 a.m. in the morning. They want the yeah, LNR. Sorry, it's to, not from 11 a.m., it's 11 p.m. Because it's, it's a provision of late night refreshment and you only From need a after 11 p.m. I think I put that 2300 to 2 a.m. Yeah. 2300 no, to 3 a.m. Sure all on the same hymn book. I yeah. apologise. It's been a long okay. day, Chair. No problem. No problem. Um, right. OK. Can I ask uh, members, do you have any questions from um, uh, she about her application or her evidence? Councillor Georgi? Uh, no, it was very clear for me and I have noted what I had to. Thank you, Nishi. Right. You're welcome. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Giles? Uh, yes, Nishi, thank you for your presentation. It was quite clear. Um, your main concern is the um, scooter noise. Is there anything that you think that the applicant can do to limit that? Unfortunately, by the nature of the takeaway, the problem is it's a residential area. We all love pizzas. We all know that. And I was quite happy for it to be midnight because of the, you know, Monday to Thursday, school days, etc. But 2 a.m. is very unreasonable. And we have had residents who have come to us and sort of um, protested about this. And the scooter noise, they all rev up. It could be Just Eat. It could be Deliveroo. They all use different um, apps. So it's not like one Uber Eats would turn up or something like that, systematically switch the engine off. They stand and, you know, if they stand on the high street and they talk and converse. So I'm envisaging the same problem of noise pollution. So that's why I think it's reasonable to bring it in line with the others. Thank you. That's it. Okay. You're welcome. Is she, um, going on the, on, on the timing, um, I, I, I'm hoping or I'm, I'm, ex, I'm assuming that you've had a view of the new licensing um, regulations that have, have been passed for the London Borough of Hounslow, but specifically yes, uh, core hours, the, the, the item on core hours. Are you, are, you common, are you aware of those? I am aware of those, yeah. uh, Chair. So I'm just, um, so I'm trying to find my I know. Core hours. All right, I'm trying to find the page. <laughs> um, there, the licensing activity generally authorised subject to demonstrating LP1, LP2 um, should be Monday to Thursday, um, 0900 to 2300, um, and Friday and Saturday, 0900 to midnight. Um, now, this is in an area which is predominantly um, considered to be residential, which I believe this area is. Is that correct? Sorry, Councillor Foote, it's Rita. Yeah. Um, 
this application came in before the new policy, so we're still yeah, considering I'm, this I'm, under the old I'm policy. I'm aware of that. Okay. We are okay. free to put in um, things that we're, we're not necessarily, you know, we are free to put conditions in that, that you know, that we want to, that are relevant. Um, the fact that uh, this application has been around for a bit of time is okay, but it doesn't stop us putting in uh, conditions that we feel are relevant. But I'm okay. just talk talking about the, 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 the situation regarding, um, you know, the, the fact that when we when we did do the investigation, this was an issue that has come up. Now, the investigation was done quite some time ago. We're talking about the spring, uh, but um, they were the hours that were, were pushed forward, which will be, you know, anything that's coming in now, applications will be enforced on that, but we still have the ability to apply those sort of conditions if we so wish. So, uh, right. Um, so other than core hours and the fact that, uh, yeah, that's that's all I've got on questions. Uh, this year. Thank you very much. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to ask now. Um, uh, sorry, have either of my two colleagues got any further questions of this year? No, no, they're both shaking their heads. Thank so you. I now need to ask. Um, do we have any other persons? We don't have any other persons here, do we? As uh, objecting, they didn't. Turn, they've not come. Is that right, Bill? Uh, Ian Inman is here, isn't he? No, oh, Ian is. Yeah, but I'm yeah, not. I, I, no, I'm right. yeah. yeah, okay. No, I'm, I'm going to call Ian, uh, but I'm just looking at people who may wish to ask questions of, of Nishi. So that would be other persons, which there are none present. Um, so that, that's fine. We've ruled that out. So now I'm going to go to Ian. If you make your presentation, please, Ian. Good evening, Chair, and good evening, members of the licensing panel. So obviously we have made a representation in the Neighbourhood Enforcement Noise Pollution Team um, for a number of reasons, but mainly it's in relation to the prevention of public nuisance. Obviously, we consider that the hours that have been applied for to uh, be extremely excessive for this type of premises, especially being in this particular location. As I've dis uh, described in my review, uh, sorry, in my representation, uh, premises is located on a relatively small trade of shops and it is in a very, very mainly residential area. Um, it has a number of residential flats both to the side and above the premises and also residential properties on the opposite side of the road, London Road between 292 and 302. Obviously, the nature of the business, as we know, is uh, a pizza place and it's basically required to cook pizzas, which are either eaten in, delivered or collected by customers, stroke members of the public. Um, we have an issue with various types of noise, but the first beginning with the actual cooking process of the uh, pizzas themselves, as I stated in my um, document, uh, there is an issue potentially with the plant noise and obviously if the application was granted, this noise would continue. Um, on until the early hours of the morning. Um, there is motor units relating to the oven extraction and also various forms of refrigeration units, um, photos of which I did provide with my representation. Obviously, during the current operating hours, that, that noise is audible, especially beyond the background noise, um, and especially as we go into the very late night, early hours of the morning. So potentially with additional hours and additional hours of operation of that equipment, there is the likelihood that this will cause noise disturbance, especially to residents on the Rose and Crown Mews development. Um, the premises itself, as I've stated, has a very small stand up area inside where I assume uh, customers purchase and maybe eat food inside. Um, in addition to the um, applicants sort of own scooter delivery drivers, um, there is again, I know this has been mentioned, Deliveroo and Uber Eats uh, service, which we have been finding are causing a number of issues across the borough where groups of drivers congregate, um, chat, they're quite often boisterous while they're waiting for orders to come through. Obviously in this location where at night there is a quite a low ambient background noise, um, our concern is the noise from just these drivers alone will cause a dis disturbance. 
Um, obviously, I'm concerned about the noise from the cooking process, but obviously, you know, it, it, there, there is also the additional issue of vehicle noise on the surrounding roads. These scooters are known to sort of speed and rev up quite quickly, both when pulling in and driving off. Um, and then again, you have to take into account residential properties on Teesdale M, and half from roads, which are the adjoining roads off the London road. Um, the applicant has not provided detail on how they are actually going to really manage any noise impact from the increase in hours. We did try to contact the applicant, uh, we're unable to speak to him. We did leave a message with a member of his staff who I've, um, details I've left in there, Ms. Name Nasa, on the 6th of October, but we didn't receive any return call or additional information either from the applicant themselves or someone representing him from his company. So obviously we can only pass judgment on what we actually, the information that's provided to us. There was a very, very brief noise impact assessment, but it's it's really totally insufficient and inadequate. Um, in as far as the, 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 the hours that I've asked, been asked for, we, 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 we would have no objection to them being extended, but not till those times in the morning and that mainly arises from the particular location of the premises itself it is in a very quiet area especially at night um, i appreciate it's on the london road but after about 11 pm the traffic noise and the ambient noise levels do drop significantly therefore noise from people being either on scooters or outside or arriving at the premises um, would be very very noticeable there are no other premises in that immediate facility that are open till those times of the mornings and this would obviously be the only one that would be creating noise as we see it. Um, bear with me a sec, sorry. Yeah, um, I've also queried the issue of the floor plan um, because that is very inaccurate and as I've stated, almost misleading. We are, can't quite understand where these floor plans have been, how they've been drawn or put to the panel because they're not accurate as to what the premises itself is inside. So I don't really understand how they can be claiming that they will be able to have a seated area with six chairs. And there just is not the room unless there's going to be some major alterations of the premises itself. Again, because you've got residential flats directly above this premises, an increase in customers inside would, and I have to stress, would increase noise in those flats above, especially at night and into the early hours of the morning. So that is again one serious concern for us. And again, I have to stress there is no clear noise management plan as to how these these issues would or will be addressed. Um, we are also concerned about the additional increase in noise from waste and recycling bins. Um, again, you know, with additional increase in hours, additional waste is obviously going to be produced. Um, there may be sufficient waste provision at the moment, but again, if there needs to be an increase in deliveries or collection, deliveries of goods, collections of waste, what times would those, the, the, those occur? You know, again, it's all an increase in noise arising from the extended hours. So we feel that the hours are far too extreme for this particular premises um, and we can't actually you know, make an informed decision as to whether it would be compliant with what we consider to be good practice by any type of or similar type of premises. That's all I really have to say at this stage, Councillor. OK, thank you, Ian. Um, right, can I go to members if you have any questions of uh, Ian? Sorry, uh, Gabriella, I'll ask you first. You're muted. Yeah, sorry, I was just looking for the mic button. Um, Ian, I think you've made your representations extremely clear. I don't have any other questions at this time. OK, Adriana, have you any questions? Thank you, Chair. Um, not at this moment. I, it's very clear for me what Ian presented. OK. Um, Right, I'm going to ask the applicant if he has any questions of both the uh, officers that have made reports. So if you've got any, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I can't find your name on the on the papers. So I don't know. It's down as PJ West. I presume that's the company. Uh, Richard, yes, I just asked that question in the chat. Um, could we have some written confirmation of the name of the person on the phone? Yeah, is that possible. Yeah. 
sorry. Hello. Harris. H A W R I S. Last name Sawa. S A R W A R. I'm not catching that. Is anybody catching it? No. Hello, you... sir. Uh, the gentleman on the phone is Harris Sawa. Fantastic. Thank you. Harris Sawa. Harris. <coughs> Sawa. That's right. Yeah. That's right. right. OK. Thank you very much. OK, Mr. Sawa, right, um, then you, you, you have the opportunity now to ask questions of the two officers that are given evidence. Sure. Uh, do you have any um, questions? Um, this is not the time for you to make your input, but just to ask questions no, no, of, of the officers. Sure. Um, so obviously with the two separate representations, um, both have expressed the, their concerns and so on. But what I would really like to know is should this application be granted on what times would they suggest would be most appropriate based on the premises, location, etc. Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, Nishi Patel has written till midnight, but hasn't specified the days. And uh, Ian, sorry, has also said he doesn't necessarily have an objection to any late night refreshment. But of course, just a clarification on the times would be great. Yeah, sure. So with my rep, I've said midnight. I think that's reasonable. Uh, you'd put your application in before where, you know, it stated uh, you could have up to midnight. So I'm quite happy for it to be up to midnight. But obviously it's up to, to Sunday, the right? panel. Monday to Sunday, I'm afraid. Yeah, so. Um, yeah. No, just, uh, just my reference. That yeah, good. that's that's fine with me as long as, but you're not, you know, I don't feel comfortable with 2, 2 a.m. and 3 no, a.m. and 4 a.m. for New Year's as well. So my primary so, so objection you would is like because us to the redact the seasonal variation. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Right. Were you asking questions of Ian as well, so? Yes. Yes, please. Uh, Ian, are, are you able to respond to that? Uh, yeah, basically to concur uh, really with Nishi. I mean, we would have no objection for midnight Monday to Sunday. Um, and again, obviously, we would request that the seasonal variations be withdrawn at this stage. Obviously, going forward, if there are no long term issues, we would welcome another application further down the line. But at this stage, it's far too um, excessive, we feel. Sure. OK, any other questions? Uh, for uh, the, no, no. the officers, Mr. Sawa? No, no, no. no. OK. Right, OK, so. Um, there aren't any uh, other persons. Uh, present, so we move on to uh, the applicant now to um, make his case. So Mr. Saar, would, would you like to make your case? Yeah, sure. So uh, just to say PJ West London is part of a parent company, which is Papa John's Pizza Group. We have over 61 stores in just in London alone, with 95% of them having a late night refreshment license. And in this case, of course, our store in Isleworth is in question. Um, I mean, ultimately, just to address more or less the main concerns that came up from the resident representations and that both of the licensing authority as well. Um, I mean, I think just to state the obvious with, with respect, um, we do not use any form of music or entertainment within the premises at any time of the day. We do not sell alcohol either, um, never have done and essentially never will do. And that's not part of the plan. Um, so yeah, that's just to state the obvious from my side anyway. Um, but just to address the general concerns that have come out from both, I'd say both, both, both representations, be it from the public as well as the licensing authority, um, with regards to public nuisance, in my understanding being the main one, uh, just to note the following is that we, our motorbikes, especially within Isleworth, anyway, they're all brand new, they're less than two months old. Um, they are petrol bikes, admittedly. However, they've had a silencer installed on them. This is something that our fleet uh, supervisor has obviously uh, ensured on, on, on our motorcycles. Um, this is pretty, as I say, to reduce the level of noise, um, et cetera as compared to other older models that may cause you know, forms of public nuisance and upset to the local community. With regards to, for example, litter, Papa John's, uh, and obviously us as a franchise as well, we do regular litter patrols despite other representations saying, saying you know, the opposite. Um, that is obviously not only just within the immediate vicinity, 
but also across the roads behind in alleyways, etc. Um, so that is done regularly to ensure that obviously we seem to come across as, as, as a caring brand, a brand that cares about its local community. With regards to the noises that may emit from Tesco or Ladbrokes on the parade, I mean, Ladbrokes closes at 10 p.m. Uh, again, and likewise, uh, Tesco closes at 11. Um, therefore, I don't really see how we would be, you know, causing further noise from our customers uh, from that time if they're unable to purchase any alcohol past that, or for example, enter a betting the betting shop and you know place their bets you know, to sort of cause, cause any loitering that may occur. With regards to CCTV, we have always had a very very state of the art CCTV system which has multiple functions, um, which has always been in place uh, since we've been trading for all our stores, let alone just uh, Isleworth. Um, and that again, it's very, very high tech in the sense that we can just produce images there and then for any interested party, be the police, licensing authority, um, and obviously all our managers are trained on how to use that system comp comprehensively and regular training, retraining is given in order to uh, ensure that everyone's up to date with the new systems that come up. With regards to rubbish collection, for example, we express that our staff dispose of all, rubbish, all uh, waste, commercial waste that emits from the building um, before 10 p.m. every single day. Again, this is to sort of avoid anyone using back doors, as it may be in this case, or side doors or whatever have you, to ensure that no one is disturbed. Um, some other things about, again, as I say, alcohol was mentioned, but we do not sell alcohol. Um, Sorry, just going through this. The private road that is at the rear of the premises, as I say, we don't have any immediate use for that apart from storing the bins. Um, and as I say, we only encourage our staff to only dispose of waste prior to 10 p.m. every single day. Um, with regards to protection of children from harm, regular training is given on that. And we have a comprehensive training system, which is an online training system, which is regularly updated as well. Um, as I say, just to generally say, Papa John's, as much as any other business, I think uh, where it be there's immediate parking outside on the parade, we do not make any other noise, as it were, than any other business may do. Obviously, Tesco also being quite, you know, a national chain of supermarkets, maybe I would say produce more noise than more, what we would, from my, my understanding and my experience in the business, um, you know, we tend to only make sure that our staff are aware of the situations that can occur and the potential problems it may cause, especially with our local neighbours. We're only seeking this application from the demand from our immediate residents and neighbours. Um, that's the only time, you know, just to express the fact that we've been open for 10 years and uh, it's the first time we're seeking a late night refreshment application. So of course, there's only ever come out of need over the last 10 years. And just to say also, there are other premises such as our, our competitors, such as Domino's Pizza and uh, Pizza Hut and a few other local places within the immediate vicinity that are open till 1am and so on. I mean, that's all I have to say for the time being, but I welcome any questions and so on. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Sahar. Uh, right, uh, councillors, uh, I'll go to uh, Adriana. Do you have a question? Hi, uh, Richard. Yes, I do have a question. Um, I would be in regards to the collection of the refuse of the beans. Who, who's done by? Um, done is by it done third. by um, by a private company or by uh, the council? And what timings um, are, are are operated on? It's done by a private company, um, but they're contracted for all of our stores in London. Uh, and from Isleworth, they usually come between 11 till 1 p.m. So 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So usually within that window, twice a week on a Tuesday and a Friday. Sorry, there's 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, within that on... window, they come to collect, depending on obviously if there's other collections prior and after. Sorry, yeah. did you say 1 p.m.? Did you say 1, 11 a.m. to... 1 p.m. or did you say 1 p.m. to 11 p.m.? No, no, um, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So within that two hour window from the morning to the early afternoon. To 1 p.m. All oh, right, okay, so just, uh, right. 
OK, yeah, sorry, Adrian, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's OK, Chair, thank you very much for assisting me. I'm um, in regards to the um, to the sitting area inside, how are you going to monitor the um, COVID regulations, as especially? Sure. So just to reiterate as well, I know that was a point that Ian picked up on as well. Was that sorry, actually, I can barely hear you. I'm sorry about that. Can you hear me better now? Yes, that's true. I do. Sorry about that. Yeah, so I mean, just to reiterate uh, what Ian Inman had mentioned regarding the floor plan as well. Um, the store was actually recently refurbished in the last six weeks, which may not obviously respect, uh, be in reflect to the actual application flooring plan. Um, we have slightly, uh, as I say, altered the aspect of it. Um, so then what we did, so in, in doing so, what we did, we don't actually, because of COVID, we don't allow any um, seating or dining, obviously, as, as in respect to the, the government regulations. And in doing so, um, we ensure that, you know, that we've got no decision in the staff of mind, all customers, that this is not permitted. Right. Um... In regards to the prevention of crime and disorder, how, how many cameras are you going to have uh, installed in, in the premises? So we already have eight cameras installed, which is covering the inside of the premises, as well as the outside front and the rear as well. Would you be um, making this available to the Met Police on request? And how long you <laughs> you how long you um, keeping uh, um, the recordings for how long? Yeah, of course. It, I mean, it's, it's, as I say, the managers have already been trained to, to give access to any interested parties. And we keep all records for up to one year. That we, that, that's on a cloud. So that's say our system is quite steady. That we have the ability to keep it for up to one year, which is also quite beneficial. Of course, should police might want to backtrack some time ago and so forth. Right. And your food. Um... Do do you um, I'm sure our um, officers they already checked. Do you have any certificates for uh, preparing food and who is responsible for that? Sure. Yes, we have electrical installation certificates which happen every five years. We have a fire safety risk assessment, general risk assessments, COVID risk assessments, um, and all obviously subcontracted uh, sub to our national. Uh, company which deals with that. No, sorry, I, I've, I've mentioned about food uh, handling. Oh, sorry, yes, yeah. so everyone is trained with a level food safety handling uh, course. Papa John's have their own internal courses and uh, we have online regular courses which occur as well. So it's quite, it's quite up to date and quite regular that that training is given and courses are given. Right. OK, thank you, Chair. For now, I'm OK. If I if something comes in my mind, I will um, I will raise my hand. Thank you. OK, no problem. Councillor Giles. Hi, thank you, Mr. Sawa. Um, I'm just a bit confused. So what's your role within PJ West? Sure, so I'm one of the area managers that deal with your stores. Um, I work alongside uh, my colleague Osama. OK, so are you because uh, so because obviously uh, Papa John's is a franchise organization. Is it not? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So you work what for Papa John's or you're supporting PJ West in this application? So I work for the Papa John's franchise group, uh, okay. which is a subsidiary of um, which PJ West is a sub 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 subsidiary of. Yeah. So within that, we have multiple, but I do cover stores within the area. Yeah. Um, for example, okay. the Hammersmith one, which is on. Um, right. Thank uh, you. So I, I think for me, I'm just a bit curious as to why um, uh, Raheel Chowdhury hasn't been here or why they haven't res responded to any of the objections that have been made prior to this meeting. No, of course, I can big understand. Unfortunately, Raheel himself is quite ill, um, as, as is his family. Um, obviously with all these circumstances but therefore he's asked me last minute to uh, fulfill and um, I've personally dealt with in, in my time anyway in the last 10 years I've done over 25 applications that's from uh, submission to completion and obviously yeah. any sub subcommittee hearing so I'm quite quite aware of how the process works and so on and quite understanding of the full life it's, it's not really my concern it's not necessarily about checking your credential is it's just trying to understand what the relationship is no between of course it was just really obviously yourself. the franchise owner 
And yeah. uh, unfortunately, he was ill, so he asked me to fill in on his behalf. OK, um, because I will see there's been a couple of uh, um, issues that have been raised prior that don't seem to be, have been managed by the franchisee. And yeah. um, my consideration is that, you know, you you as a uh, as kind of the area manager for Papa John's, you've got a brand reputation. Yeah. A lot of it's about the relationship that you manage and you, you're responsible. But if the individual applicants, like unfortunately because he's sick, but if he's if he's not got um, mechanisms in place to support sure. um, support him with this, I do wonder if um, some of the issues that have been raised by the officers of the council um, sure. are are able to to deal with with uh, Mr. Chowdhury and his family directly, especially in regards to things like the manager phone number. Um, you know, sure. um, well, and I mean, whether that's going to be Mr. Chowdhury, to. Yes. I mean, Mr. Chowdhury has recently purchased the, the franchise um, approximately six months ago. Yeah. So we are the largest, he is the largest franchisee in the UK. So we have, they have an extensive amount of, of experience and knowledge in dealing with these issues. And there's a lot of things that, of course, have been implemented in, in these stores that he's recently purchased in order to ensure their compliance, just as much as the other stores that have late night refreshment yeah. licenses as well. Um, I mean, Mr. Chowdhury is on the men, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm you know, glad to hear that. But uh, yeah, as I say, I was just filling in and I think obviously that's the obvious reason why there was no response to the licensing officer's representations or that of the residents either. Yeah. Um, of course, I've, I've just been made up to sped by uh, William kindly last week as he emailed me the, uh, you know, stuff and I've managed to get it off the uh, council website as well. Yeah. So I'm fully up, up to speed and aware of obviously the situation and the possible things that, you know, the, the licensing committee yeah. That's where the licensing team are aware of uh, and concerned of likewise with the residents as well. Um, yeah. As I say, licensing objectives are individual to every single premises and I understand that. But of course, I've assessed this with, with my colleagues as well in Mr. Charlie's absence and therefore obviously my response is accordingly. Yeah, no, of course. And I understand that there have been um, noise limiters put on the motorbikes, but what do you do to... But I, I see that also Pub John's is available via delivery, delivery Uber Eats, yeah. uh, Just so Eat. Just likewise with any other uh, any other premises or any other store that has allows that has a late night refreshment license, we regularly put up notices in and around the premises. Um, for example, on lampposts as well, um, outside, um, we, to make sure our staff remind the drivers as well. And yeah. you have to remember as well that the drivers are only in, there intermittently just to collect the delivery. They're not placing an order, then therefore waiting for the order. They're yeah. just literally there to pick up the delivery and go. Yeah. Know, they're not. No, 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 right, right, you know, and we discourage it's anyone it's waiting up. around, of course. Um, Mr. Sawa, I think we, we're, we're all very much familiar with the way that, that yeah. um, these food delivery apps work and what the setup is. Um, my my concern is that there's a lot of the time there's no validation or verification around who those drivers are, and it's very hard to track them down if some if they are doing something that's that's wrong. But that's not any of your consideration at this point. I think um, for me it's a case of um, there's been some real issues that have been raised that haven't yet been addressed by the licensee hold or the license holder. Um, yeah. And as much as I appreciate what you're doing and what you need to do from a brand reputation perspective, um, I think there it's there's still a lot of questions to be asked of um, the individual applicant. Um, of course, but we have to yeah. remember as well that the individual applicant is not actually physically running the premises. Whilst he might be the business owner, it's people like myself, area managers and store managers, which do run the business and we're best qualified to obviously answer any questions that may arise. Um, as I say, I'm only going from experience as well. Yeah. Um, you know, Mr. Well, Charlie is not physically at the store. So, yes, Mr. Sawa, I think therefore you've answered my question as well in the fact that there's been a lot of issues that have been addressed that um, I, I don't think anybody has taken responsibility for in a way that I would have liked to have seen um, at this stage. If that's if that's just my my kind of um, consideration at this time. Um, uh I, I think there's a lot of stuff because it is a residential area um you know as as we've already heard it is you know it's a road that can be very very quiet i'm very much aware of that um and creating noise at 4 a.m on christmas or new year's eve uh yeah. day is is not always going to be acceptable um or even during 
local um, or just during the weekends yeah. up until 2 or 3 a.m. as much as um, it may benefit others in, in the community. Cool. No, no, I completely agree. And I had spoken to Mr. Chowdhury prior to this, of course, and he did say that should they suggest any hours that they would be comfortable with as a whole from the committee, then of course we would accept that wherever it may be. Um, yeah. But of course it only comes out of the knowledge of yourselves in order to assess, right? So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what Mr. Chowdhury has professed as well. So he's more than happy to accept any trading times post, obviously, that come, that fall under. Well, yeah, and as far as new venture for him, I see on Companies House, he's only incorporated in the last six months. So um, I, I can understand that he, he's willing to be um, accommodating. So uh, that's my questions, uh, Councillor Foote. Right. Thank you, Councillor Charles. Uh, right. Um, it's up to me now. Um, I've, I've got a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, first of all, can I just get some um, views on the motorcycles? Um, sure. I mean, when they haven't got anything to pick up, where are they? So the motorcycles are generally they are left in the I mean outside right outside the store or towards the side where the okay. Are the drivers with them? No, but they're all chained up and locked and they have them all fitted to them. No, I'm thinking when, um, I mean, I mean, it'd be very nice to think that you've got, um, you know, 100% uh, active time with drivers on bikes all of the time, delivering and collecting, you know, 100% of their time. But my guess is that it's, it's a little bit less than that. And it's the little bit less than that that I'm a, I'm really um, interested in as to where these bikes are, um, and are they attended or are they sitting outside the shop um, with young lads sitting on top of them with the engines running? Okay, I see what you mean. I mean our own drivers. No, we as I say they help out in the store, which is part of their their job role. No one has ever left outside or allowed to go outside and sit on the bikes and I let the engines idle and rev them. Um, we do not allow that. I mean, none of us does. I don't think, I think you can, if you ever go past the package engine, I don't, I, I'm 100% certain you'd never see that anyway. Um, in respect to obviously delivery drivers and stuff, we do request them to wait outside because of COVID, we can only allow a certain amount of people inside the custom area at a time. So of course, I'm sure they would attend by their bikes. Um, but as I say, the wait time, no, it's not 100%, but I would say it's at least 95% because the system is built in a way in which the driver only arrives when the order is ready. Yeah, that's why I wasn't really asking about Deliveroo, et cetera, because they would be on response. It was so the likewise, right drivers, all our drivers that I'm particularly concerned. All our, yeah, I mean, our drivers that are employed by us, they have to help stay inside the store. We do not allow anyone to to, you know, loiter uh, outside outside the store. It's just okay. not part of the company policy. Um, I'd say if you, if you go past any Papa Jones and you see that, then I'm more than happy to put my, you know, put my hands up. But I've, in my 10 years experience, I've never seen that. OK. Um, on the machinery you know, noise, you've got machinery yeah. there. I presume it's, uh, it, it was it uh, fans and coolant. Uh, so the, the external plant that is in the picture on the um, representation, that's actually just the condenser unit for the cold room. So that runs 24 seven anyway, because obviously if we didn't, a refrigeration, as a refrigeration system, it does require that to be run uh, 24 seven. Um, but of course it's got the sound deadening material to the rear of it, which you can't obviously, obviously see from the picture, but it's also got the rubber bungs as well, which helps support any vibration noise that may emit from it. Um, so there, there's, there's there's no noise coming from anything that's um, cooling the ovens or, or taking the extracts. Uh, not post not post 11 p.m. No, this is a bit obvious. Well, not the moment because you're not operating beyond 11 no, p.m. No, no, not at all. But I, I I would stress the fact that after the fan, there is a silencer installed, um, and th th there is a you know same similar to an exhaust. It has a silencer on it. So therefore, it reduces the noise from the fan produced. Uh, uh, right, because I'm, I'm seeing that uh, I think the enforcement officer talked about the noise from equipment. Yeah. Uh, so was he wrong? 
Um, as, as I say, the noise that's generated at daytime is the same that would be at any other time of day. But I can't see it being a noise that would ever disrupt or cause public nuisance. Alright, so your refrigeration equipment is quite noisy 24-7 then? Is I wouldn't say quite noisy, no. But it has yeah. to run 24-7. It's not noisy? In my opinion, no. Because it, it, it's fairly new, it, that one anyway. It's been recently installed. Every, it's regularly serviced every six months. To obviously ensure that the fan is running appropriately and it's not running on dead bearings or the fan blades aren't bent. So of course it's, it's regularly serviced to ensure that it's maintaining and uh, it's running at its optimum op optimum uh, speed and obviously uh, accuracy. Right, um, I'm just trying to go back over the notes. Um, so yeah, it was. I see on the, on, on page 58 on the officers, uh, Mr. Inman's. Uh, as he talks about a cooking process requires the use of hot ovens which extract oven heat and cooking odor via filtration yeah. to the side of the premises through a louvered outlet which also includes an inlet yeah the motor unit that handles the air was found to be noticeable loud during normal daytime operation you, you're you're challenging that yeah I mean, it's open to interpretation what's considered loud and what's not considered loud. Possibly because I've been in the business for 10 years, I might not consider it as loud. But we've never had a complaint from a resident to say that your your fan motor is loud. We never have done. That. that was one of the first questions I posed to the staff. Well, I see it's, it's, in the, it's in the officer's report. Now, I believe it was also in uh, at least one of the residents. Uh, reports about noise from machinery. I, think, I, mean, I, I can understand that. I mean, it's up to interpretation, but for someone who's been in the business for 10 years and heard this noise nearly every single day, what, you know, I, I personally wouldn't consider it loud. And we hadn't necessarily received any complaints regarding that. And of course, any resident that may have felt that it was loud, they could have approached us prior. But we have taken measures and we can continue to take measures to ensure that any noise polluting from the machinery itself is dealt with. I mean, that's something we do. But noise at um, nine, 10 o'clock in the evening is a lot different to noise at three o'clock in the morning, isn't it? Of course, yeah, of course. I can understand that with less vehicles on the road and so forth. But as I say, I think rest assured, if we maintain it regularly, we can even install another silencer, which is probably even stronger, more recent and more a newer model. But to address the concern, of course, regarding the noise coming from it. For me personally, I don't think it's loud, but if anyone did feel like that, of course, we'd address it the best way that we can, which is, of course, to install a greater silencer and possibly internally uh, use an internal uh, condenser unit for the refrigeration system. OK, um, can I now go to CCTV? Um, on the on on the plans that we had, um, there's, there's none of the CCTV units are are shown. Can you give us some idea, some clues as to where they are? Sure. So I mean, it covers the main areas first, which is external, being the front of uh, the front of the just outside the shop front. I think possibly on the picture you might be able to see. Oh no, maybe not because it's, it, it's the same color as the shop front. But essentially, there's a black black camera there. Um, and of course, we have a notice on the door to display that as well, that there's cameras within the premises. Um, so that's at the front. There's one emitting in the customer area and then throughout the cooking preparation area within the office where the safe is stored. And of course, uh, towards the rear of the premises where the, the bin storage is and so on. But there's a total of eight cameras. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the photographs because uh, there was nothing on the plans at all. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm looking down the side of the building on your photographs. Can't see anything there. Do you know where they are on the side of the building? Or is that one there? I can't tell. On, on page 61. Uh, just pulling that up now. It should be just above the door. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but just above the door. Below the sign. 
Yeah, okay. Well, I'll take your word for it. I can't see one. What about the, the other photograph? Is that one on there? Where the cooling unit is? Yeah, I mean, that would obviously be with regards to the barbershop, um, their use. Oh, it's not on your uh, building? Well, no, because that... That's not your building? That, no, because on... We're the second. We're the second premises in from from, oh, from the corner. So you don't have the the barbershop. Your building. So no, I'm, I'm a bit puzzled as to why we got the photographs on your your copy then. Um, so let me I'll go to the other photographs um, at the front of the building. Where would the cameras be there? On the front, as I say, above the door, but below the sign. So that's on the glass, is it? Um, no, not on the glass. Where there's a little, um, like a plinth, sort of, just below, above the, above below the sign. Sorry, above above the shop front. Okay. Well, but as I say, legally, I mean, it might not be evident on the picture, but I'm happy for anyone to go there now and check. Well, no, we're sitting, here. Yeah. we're sitting here to of be course, asked to make course. a decision and, and yeah. it's based upon uh, your uh, your presentation. Um, you've course. provided the papers. I didn't. Um, and there are, I, I, you know, I'm looking inside the building as well. Um, whereabouts are the CCTV cameras inside the building? The CCTV cameras inside the building are above. You actually you can't see from the uh, from the picture. It's if you walk inside the building, it's on the left hand side in the top right corner. What when you were coming through the front door? Through the front door, yeah. What's it looking at? It's looking at immediate in front of it is the front door, the shop front, some of the counter, and of course the immediate floor area. And you've got eight cameras, you say. Yes, eight cameras. We have an eight channel DVR. So um, where are all eight of them then? Because you've got one inside the door and you've got one outside yeah. the door. Where are the rest? If you look at the picture of the kitchen, you can actually see a CCTV monitor screen above the preparation area on the wall. Which is the kitchen? Mine might be too clear. However, um, I mean, I, I can see that because I know because I've been there. So which is the kitchen? The one? Uh, if you look, for example, where the counter is, or the one that's facing the counter, the picture that's facing facing the counter, towards the left hand side. I can see a see, see a TV. Yeah, so that TV is is a mirror screen for the CCTV unit. It's the what? Sorry, a mirror screen. A mirror screen, yeah, because we have one in, one screen inside the office, and then one screen which is in the so that's kitchen area. So that they can see what's on cameras but where are the cameras that's correct that's the screen well, that's not the camera is it no that's not the camera but i mean in the picture that that's the screen that's that's there well it, i don't know it could be mickey mouse showing on there for all i know right um, okay you know i mean oh, all right okay well you know you had the the opportunity to make that available to us and and, it, and, and it's not there um Right, OK. Um, you've covered refuse. It's collected between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. twice a week. Yeah. Yeah, OK. OK, that's all the questions I've got then for the moment. Um, so we can move on. Are, any questions from either of the officers? Missy? Sorry, can I wait before I do? Can I go back to my colleagues um, to see if they have any further questions? Gabriella or? No, not at this time, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm OK for now, yet. Yeah. I'll let you know. OK, so I go to the officers. Um, Nissi or Ian, do you have any questions of the applicant? Yeah, sure. Um, it's Nishi. Uh, just uh, Harris, with regards yeah. to I'm interested in the, I know you've said all these new scooters don't have it. What happens is, and you know that, that they all congregate, they wait because they work on commission basis. So you're telling me your staff are going to go out and deliver. Who the hell is going to be in the shop 
But having said that, you've got these new scooters, which good, you should have those to be in compliant um, with the noise levels, etc. They do wait because they wait for commissions, etc. So if you've got orders coming in from others, I mean, whilst I respect the fact about the coolers and the engines and all that inside the shop. I'm more concerned about your noise levels disturbing the residents Monday to Thursday, Friday when kids have to go to school, etc. So, you know, what I need to know is are you going to be able to comply with our request with regards to midnight latest or even 11 o'clock from Monday to Thursdays? As you said, you'd be happy to do that. Of course, I mean, as I say, these conditions that we, uh, yourself and your colleague have suggested, many of them of which we already do without even questioning, purely because the reputation of the brand is, is at risk, of course. If customers or local residents feel that we cannot protect them or protect public nuisance or any other validity objectives, then of course it would question our validity of our application. But the confidence therefore comes in where we ensure that we have a lot of processes and procedures in place to address these already. So is that the fact that you're happy to be, you know, closing at midnight? I mean, based on that, yes. I mean, I think my, my understanding is that you need greater, in, uh, greater understanding from us. Um, and just like any other premises that we have with that operates with the late night refreshment lighting, these are the procedures and policies we have in place. There isn't, I mean, there's very rarely any spe special uh, um, circumstances, whether it be to planning or anything like that, but generally we have procedures in place. Our own drivers do not loiter outside. It's against our company policy, whether it be the well, third party. That's fair enough. Uber but it is the fact, can we just say we're mm. going to go around in circles here? It's no, just that when they congregate, you do use apps like Just Eat and Deliveroo and Uber yes, and all the correct, other yes. ones that exist. There's eight apps out there from my reckoning. So, yeah. and as you said, you've got a brand of Papa John's, so they are popular. So they will go to those and they click and collect, etc. And they hover yeah. waiting to, you know, that's where they congregate and have chats. It's not just Papa John's. As you said, it could be Pizza Hut, but it's your application we're looking at. And that's why it's imperative. It's a residential area. You should be mindful yeah. of that because you wouldn't like it three in the morning in your of area. No, I wouldn't. Thank you. No more questions. Right. Thanks, Sissy. Ian, have you got any questions? A uh, couple of points, please, Councillor. Sorry, Chair. First yeah. thing, obviously, just to clarify something. I have blown up one of my photos and at the front of the premises, it looks like there are CCTV cameras on the facade, but they're very hard to see. But anyway, that's putting that aside. Mm -hmm. um, the issue of the plant noise, obviously, which I mentioned in my representation, it is loud and it is very noticeable. Now, that's during the working day when I went there and at night, unless that unit has changed considerably, that will be clearly audible by to the residents um, by the Rosencrown Muse. Now, the other issue is obviously I don't really want to harp on about this is what Nishi has raised about other motorcycle users. We have considerable problems with Uber and delivery drivers elsewhere across the borough. And these are in areas which are, let's say, less residential, more high street, um, and with a much greater background noise. And we, we're receiving complaints from other types of premises. So I'm not really satisfied that this issue has been always been properly considered because the potential impact is great if this is permitted you know for what's what's been applied for also the issue of plant noise and i'm going to go back to that these units switch off probably around 11 or 12 p.m i'm not quite sure what time because sometimes they operate past the operating hours um, to cool the premises down but if these are going to be running much into the early hours of the morning whether it be the oven extraction which is the very noisy predominant noise source here or even the refrigeration units because possibly there's going to be an additional load on them in their current form they, these will noticeably impact. So can can the gentleman there confirm to me, you know, how this will be maintained? Because you cannot just simply install a, a, another silencer in line in, in an extraction duct system. In doing that, you then need to increase the motor size of the unit to pull the additional air through the additional silencer. So it's not just a straightforward issue of saying we're going to install another silencer within that plant noise or the the oven extraction system the, the acoustics does not work like that 
Thank you. So essentially, um, I should have reiterated on that. As the store has been trading for over 10, just over 10 years now, it is the original that was installed 10 years ago. Admittedly, in the last 10 years, there have been developments in this, of course, to address concerns such as the ones you're proposing. So therefore, we can install a like for like in terms of size, but in terms of the quality or the effectiveness of the silent, so we can install a better one. It's not, I'm, I'm not suggesting install a, a bigger one or anything like that, but something that's more modern and more, you know, more friendly, as it were. Well, I mean, okay, I can appreciate what you're saying, but obviously that doesn't actually answer the question because at this moment in time, the current system in there is noticeably audible, as I've said, during normal day, daytime hours of operation at night or into the early hours of the morning, it would be, as in, in its current form, considerably more noticeable for neighbouring residential properties. Right, okay. I mean, ultimately, uh, that's what we can offer at, at this time. Um, you know, we can't reduce it or turn it off because that would effectively that means there would be no extraction system or no refrigeration system. But we can, uh, uh, just like, yeah. I understand that, but I mean, what I'm, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is maybe this should have been considered, or thought out a little bit more before the the application was put in, or maybe mm. before the, um, the, the the panel hearing tonight, because as, as has already been sort of mentioned, if, yeah. If representatives from the company had contacted us to discuss some of this before tonight's hearing, we might not necessarily be in the position we're in at the moment because ultimately it's a lack of information from the applicant that's caused these representations to be put in and the lack of response. No, I completely understand that. Um, I mean, ultimately, as I say, that's what we can offer in order to essentially resolve the issue raised. Um, and we have done that in the past, and it has been successful on one or two premises. Um, but uh, yeah, as I say, the applicant was unfortunately ill. This was passed over to me, and I'm dealing with it with, with, with the best of my knowledge and my experience. Uh, okay, I've got no more questions to ask. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. Um, right, that's all of the questions because we don't have uh, any other persons here. Um, right, can I, um, move, we're moving in now to the closing part, but before we do, can I ask the applicant if you've got any further comments uh, to make, but can you please uh, perhaps use them in amplifying things that you've already said or have been part of the questioning. Do not introduce any new material. Sure, no, I mean, as I say, um, us as, as a big brand, you know, we have a reputation to uphold. We only ever do things such as late, late night refreshment licenses and other processes in order to just just to meet the demand of our local community. Um, as I say, we've been trading for 10 years. That's the only thing to consider. Of course, we're happy to consider any other conditions imposed um, upon the operating schedule in light of a, of, of a late night refreshment license and any other questions that may need fulfilling or any other guarantee that we're more than happy to provide. All right. OK, thank you. Uh, right, where are we now? We've got uh, we will now adjourn to uh, another visual room. Um, Canice, is there anything you want to do in, in uh, advising what the procedures and option, options are open to the group? Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, in terms of uh, what will happen from this point onward, uh, so procedurally, um, the panel should now retire uh, to consider the representations made by the applicant as well as uh, the uh, um, other parties. Um, in terms of options, obviously the panel will be taking into account all the representations uh, made um, in order to determine whether to grant uh, the application in full or to uh, grant the application but modify it um, or to reject it. But obviously that's for the panel to uh, uh, 
discuss and consider if there are any modification to be added uh, or whether to grant it in full or reject it. Um, in terms of time chair, um, it's now 6.15. Um, usually uh, the panel would retire and would come back as uh, soon as possible. But if we're running late, obviously we'd uh, need to prompt. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I would normally we'd expect to be able to reach a decision within 15 minutes. Uh, if it does look like it's going to go on longer than that, then uh, we will notify our technical people who will be able to pass that information on. But in the meantime, um, myself, Councillor George and Councillor Giles and uh, Kelly Sally will uh, depart to the uh, decision room. So we'll let you know in 15 minutes whether we're able to come back. OK, everybody. <laughs> yes, Councillor Burt. <laughs>
So we got everybody else back in their seats. Yep. Yes, Oops. Councillor. Oh, we still haven't got Councillor George, have we yet? No. Any oh, sorry. Adriana can't join. She's struggling. It's because she declined the invitation, so it's probably not in her diary. Yeah. Let me, let me try and get her back in. Yeah. Okay, that explains it. In an absolute case, Chair, if um, Councillor Lutash is back oh, in. There she is. Hello, <laughs> Councillor. Right. Okay. <laughs> so we're all here. Yes, everybody here? Uh, Richard, hold on a sec. Um, Kanise is typing something in the chat. I think she just wants to verify something before we move on. Okay, let me so, so. show conversation. Is that the one? Uh, yeah. That's not showing anything for me on mine. That's not. You might get a panel to the left, uh, sorry, to the other left, to the right. All right, OK, hang on a minute, let's get back in there. It's dropped out. OK. Here we go. Is it on the dotted lines? I've never can work this one out. Uh, the chat, no, that's not the chat, is it? No. So it's... Denise, that's my understanding. Sorry, yeah. Councillor Foot, it's the um it's the button next to the participants list. So you see the two people with the plus next to it. It's a little speech box. If you click on that. So I thought I clicked. Ah, got it now. Um Yeah, I, I understood that. Yeah, okay. I, I recognise that. Um, yeah. But it's how we express it. <laughs> yes, um, that's right. You know, the, the just thing that, yeah. yeah, no, I realise that it was how you <laughs> express it. But yeah, I think that's OK. Yeah. Right. Yes. OK. Thank you. Let's clear that bit. So. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Sorry. The applicants here, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Right, OK. Um, we've considered all of the presentations that we've received this evening um, on the application for late night refreshment. And we have decided that we would agree to um, Sunday to Thursday to closure being 2300 hours. Friday and Saturday to being midnight. And New Year's Eve and New Year's Day being 0200. So those are yeah, the. We accept that. I'm sorry. We accept that. That's fine with us. You, you accept that. OK, yeah. thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, well, um, th there is no other business. You will hear um, the, the full transcript of that uh, within five working days. Um, so. Um, Tuesday, that gets you around to about next Monday, doesn't it really? Um, but yeah. So, so you should have that, that in writing to you. What we give you now is, a, if you like, the, the, the shortened version. But it's basically that. The only other thing that I would mention would be, could we, the, the, the committee felt that they should recommend that you should, or your um, person in, in there, the, the, man, the manager of the premises, should be in contact with uh, Mr Inman's department um to talk over the situation regarding noise levels um it's 
uh, certainly it's Ian's speciality and something that he's been involved with for a, a very long time. So he's, he's very much the council's expert on this. So I would, and, and I know my colleagues yeah. would recommend that you, you uh, that you have someone talk to him about what can be done in those sort of circumstances to make things a little bit better. Sure, I mean, if Ian wants to set up a meeting at, at the store with the manager, then we can go through everything in order to make some improvements. Sam, really, more than happy to do that. Okay. Right, anyway, that all being done, uh, it's only now for me to say thank you to everybody that's participated this evening, uh, to my fellow councillors, to our officers, and to the general public, and uh, say good night. All be safe and well as much as possible under the circumstances, and hopefully uh, I can see you all again in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank Good night. you everyone. Thanks very much. Thank you. Good night. Okay, and that's a wrap.